All right, everybody, Baron here, and welcome back to Ultimate Epic Battle Simulator. I know you guys have always wondered, what would happen if you got all of the factions from Lord of the Rings, or as many as you could? Right here, we have Gondorian Swordsmen. Over here, we've got the Dwarves. Oh my god, look at this. Creepy faces. Here we have the Easterlings, and look at those, man. They always look cool. I always thought that the Herodrim looked really, really cool. If only we could get Oliphants in here, that'd be dope. Now we've got the Elves here. The High Elves. I'm so high. Over here, we've got the Men of Rohan. They're dismounted, even though they're cavalrymen right now, you know. Then we've got the Orcses here. The Orcses. Orcs is precious. And then the Urukai of Isengard. Whom do you serve? Now, they're all gonna have a freaking battle royale because I wanna know if you pitch 500 men from all of these factions against each other, who wins? Who takes the city? Right? Because look at this. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven different armies of 500 soldiers. One giant city, a little bit of a maze, there's different spawn positions, so maybe some factions are favored over the others. We could always do a flat test map a little bit later to kind of really show. But I mean, if you think about it, some countries are going to be, or countries, factions are going to be closer to others, so they're either at a, a, an advantage or disadvantage, and that's just part of it, alright? It's just part of it. So what we're going to do is we're going to leave the statistics up on the left so you can see how many people there are remaining. So the Urukai, are they splitting up? Or are they going in? It looks like the Urukai are going straight up against some of the Morian or the some of the orcs here. And the Urukai are so much bigger than the orcs. They're not really using their spears. It looks like they're punching actually. So this is pretty funny. Now over here, we've got some of the men of Rohan up against the orcs, and who seems to be winning this? It almost seems to be a fair and pitched battle. There's not too much fluctuation in the front lines here. It all depends- oh, who's throwing more mass? It looks like Rohan's putting all of their factions, so I'm gonna say that the- oh my god. The Urukai absolutely whooped the orcs. So let's see where else we're having some skirmishes. It looks like the men of Gondor have taken the city square, and it looks like they've encountered a few of the Easterlings, and whenever they do, they just take them out pretty quick, like. There's been a few men of Gondor taken out. Now, what else do we have? Oh, look at this choke point. We've got an actual frickin'... <laughs> look at this. This is the Dwarves versus the Easterlings. Oh, shoot! And the Elves here... They've got bows and arrows. Now, I can switch up their weapons, and that's what we're gonna do after. Because I can have elven, like, melee soldiers, because these poor Easterlings are getting shot from the back. I wonder... Are they gonna have to worry about... No, it doesn't look like the elves have to worry about too much. And look at this, it's an- it's just like a... pile of bodies making a literal wall. So if it was to end like this, I'd put my money on the elves. I think it's always safe to put your money on the elves. Because they can live so long, they can live the longest, right? So it's like, they can literally just like, practice the martial arts and different fighting techniques for like, hundreds of years. So they're gonna be better, like, par for par, over almost any other soldier. Oh my god! Hey look, look who arrived! The men of Gondor are like, hey, what's up guys? How you doing, orcses? I mean, dwarves, as they're getting peppered by arrows. Yeah, I think since we made them archers, since we made them archers, they're definitely gonna take out pretty much everybody. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna make this go full speed. 2x speed. The dwarves are coming down, but a lot of them are getting picked off as they jump over, because there is a distinct bottleneck here. And a lot of the dwarves actually- oh my god! Some of them have found a shortcut. Let's see if this guy gets shot with arrows, or does he make it? Oh, he did not make it. Yeah, so they may fall, but I'd say that overall, this looks like it's going... Where's the other guys? Alright, who's left? There are... Only 8 Urukai, 460 archers, there's 30 soldiers of Gondor, and 260 dwarf swordsmen. So the elves here, having range technique and basically finding a choke point to just wipe out the dwarves. The dwarves are not happy about this. The dwarves and the elves do not get along. 
And I think most of it stems from like, I mean, if you think about the last alliance, the dwarves didn't help there, right? Whoa, is that a dragon? No. I was gonna say, man, what if you could get smog up in here? Look at the dwarves. <laughs> All right, so I'd say this is definitely a victory for the elves. They just can't, they just can't match the fire rate and just the sheer damage potential, the DPS, if you will, of an entire legion of the best elvish archers in the world. Because these guys are kicking that butt right now. All right, so the last... Oh, man. Yeah, this was a little bit... All right. All right, so we've made a few changes. Now the elves do not have bows. They have shields and they're amazing looking elvish swords. It looks like you could probably use your helmet as a weapon. Oh, and look at this. We've also made the men of Gondor more elite. Look at these helmets. These are the Fountain Guard, which are just like some of the elite of the elite Gondorian soldiers. And I've added an eighth faction into this. So they kind of predated the movies Lord of the Rings, right? But basically before that, in the first, like, there used to be a kingdom called Arnor, and Arnor rivaled Gondor in all of its might. So if you thought Gondor was cool, imagine an equally as big kingdom up to the north. So we've got 500 men of Arnor in the middle to kind of spice things up, basically. We put them in the middle, so hopefully that will attract... I thought about putting them over here, but I thought that'd give them too distinct of an advantage, because it would ju they'd only have the Urukai. And I'm hoping some of the Urukai either the men of Arnor come out. They're kind of spreading every which way. But I'm hoping that it might distract some of the Urukai. No, not enough, man, because the Urukai, these orcs just get absolutely ganked. But if you think about it, orcs are probably the weakest individual soldier out of everything. And what they make up for in lack of quality is quantity, right? There's just so many. So the orcs get split right away. The Urukai are bigger and badder than orcs. And look at this. One of the men of Arnor just ran up against- You know what, hold on. I've made one more change. Instead of, like, the Urukai pikemen, we took the Uruks from, like, the Shadow of Mordor series. So they're not- They don't look as cool, but I feel like the Urukai are kind of broken, the ones that I've got. So, we fixed it. Alright, so let's see how this goes. I'm actually kind of curious how the elves fare this time. Now that they're just melee. So it doesn't look like they're splitting their forces. Yeah, that's kind of blocked off. So, the Elves and the Urukai both kind of have a situation whereby... Ooh. Let's see how the Elves are doing against the Herodrim. But the Herodrim gets split. The Herodrim only send maybe... Oh. A, f a fifth? Maybe a fifth of their force against the full might of the Elves? So that is not going to favor them at all. Although, you can see Elves are falling. Who gets the concave? Well, I think the Herodrim have the concavity, basically, like, they're kind of circling around, they're surrounding the elves, but the elves just have just sheer numbers, so, in that, they have local superiority. And here the Herodrim go up against the dwarves, the dwarves also have a similar experience. None of them, I guess there's no real way through. And here, these are the guys I'm really curious about. So it looks like Gondor and Arnor, the rivalry, is in full swing. And their helmets look really, really similar. But I really think that the Gondorian... Fountain Guard are just gonna be, like... Indomitable. Undefeatable. You just can't do nothing about it. I don't know. I think the men of Rohan are doing okay. Oh, but I think there's enough... Oh, yeah, I'm, I'm expecting an Urukai victory. Okay, look at this. The elves in the Herodrim. Now, the elves should be posting up against the dwarves. It's kind of funny how you're seeing little rivalries, right? Elves versus dwarves, Arnor versus Gondor. I don't know much about the history of Arnor. I know that they fought the Witch King at Mount Gundabad, which is in what, Mirkwood Forest, right? Ooh, these guys kicked that butt, man. These guys probably are my favorite. I'd probably want to be... I mean, I... I've always thought, like, if you lived in Lord of the Rings, which would you want to be? A man, a dwarf, an elf, or, like, an orc, or goblin, or, like, Urukai, or something else? Well, someone might be like, I want to be smug, you know? But if you could, if you could only be, like, kind of the humanoid ones, 
dwarf, elf, or man, what would you choose? It's hard to argue against elf because you could live forever, right? I mean, like, you, you never die of old age. Isn't that kind of how it works for them? Dwarves can live long, and then... You know, Aragorn, he was half-elf, so he lived longer. I think Numenorians were like a type of human that could live much longer. And I think, didn't Numenorians come from Arnor? Man, there's so much, or were like they the first men? There's so much of the lore that I kind of just have a vague familiarity with, but not enough to like definitively say, oh, this is that and that is this. Oh, wow. The elves are really... See, the men are going to have to rally right here. This is where it's going to come down to. Actually, there's not enough elves. There's just not. Who are these guys? Oh, my God. Wait, let's, let's, let's take this. All right, so the Citadel guards have 331. There's one Urukai remaining. I wish I could click on it. Like, I could press the number two. There's 100 elf shieldsmen. Whoa. That means the dwarves are winning. The dwarves are winning the skirmish. Or maybe that maybe it's just that enough elves went to fight elsewhere. So right now I'm really putting my money on the Gondorians. I mean if you think about it, like the elves left Middle Earth and they're like, the age of men has begun. So that was kinda like the whole premise of like the end of the Lord of the Rings. And you know, you know, like in that alternative history, alternative scenario, or alternative universe. Or just separate universe, not really even an alternative one. It's like men's like, men's, you know, what would you say, reign over the world started as the elves, who were kind of like the bosses of the bosses, left. And they went to the undying lands. Wow, look at this. The elves are what, completely gone? Elves are completely gone, and now it's citadel guards... ...versus the dwarves. Alright, so we're toggling it to go faster. Because I want to I want to have a definitive winner here. And then we're going to go to a flat test map. So let's see, can we kind of... I think if we just think about, like, the sheer numbers left... I think it's clear that the Gondorian Citadel Guard are gonna win. If you want to see more Lord of the Rings battles, this is just like a fun scenario of like, who would win and who's got the best? But we need to do more tinkering and testing, right? But if you want to recreate, like, say the Battle of Five Armies from The Hobbit, or the Battle of Pelennor Fields, as best we can, since we don't have Oliphants or Rohanian uh, cavalry, I, you know, we could kind of do stuff like that. Oh, yeah. I'm saying that this one is definitely going to... Look at this, man. It seems like one man of Gondor can take out one to two or uh, orcs. Oh, they'd be so mad. That'd be a grudgeon. Dwarves. So this is the last of them. And we'll put it on a flat test map and see what happens. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, some of them sneak around and look at this. Seth! <laughs> Any of them falling down? They're actually a decent amount falling down. The Temple Guard are victorious. There we go. Those are some amazing Urukai. We just grabbed the wrong ones. I knew I had some good ones. These are the ones with like the big shields and the big swords. So they're not the Berserkers as they're armored, right? But now we have a really good representation. Oh man. The Temple or the Citadel Guards. I think the Fountain Guards might look even cooler, but we don't have them. Then we got the regular Orcs. Boo! So who's your favorite faction? And look at this. Start the battle, boys. And we're gonna speed it up double. So it seems like most of the factions have to split into double. Although, if you look over here, the Orcs didn't as much. Oh my god, but here we go, the Urukai. The Urukai versus- oh, no, never mind. The Citadel Guard didn't. And it looks like the Citadel Guard are doing a really good job at killing Urukai. These Urukai are much bigger, but they're actually just getting wrecked. And look at this. These Citadel Guard just wiped out a ton of men of Arnor. All right, I think the Citadel Guard are just like OP. All right, so here we go. Who? Wow, the Urukai are completely wiped out. They may have looked cooler, but I don't think they're as functional. The men of Arnor are beating up on these dwarves, and look who's coming in from the other side. The dwarves are about to get eliminated as the Herodrim come in here. So now it's the men of Arnor versus the Herodrim. We've got a few uh, Gondorian Citadel Guard coming in to flank. There are 379 Citadel Guard left. My god. 
Yeah, I'm gonna change from Gondorian Citadel Guard to like more of a, a middle of the road unit because these would be the elites of Gondor. Although when they don't have numbers, they get whooped. So let's see. There they are. This is them, isn't it? The big pack of unstoppable Citadel Guard. They're meeting up against the elves, and if you look at the elves, they are dropping so fast. There's less than 100 enemy units total on the field, and now there's less than 40. So I'm gonna say Citadel Guards walk away with this one. I'm gonna speed it up to two time. Two times! Speed. Look at these brave elves. You, you fools. 11 elves. The last alliance of man and elves has fallen apart, and it looks like Gondor's mad about it. And boom. All right, so what we did was we went back to the Urukai pikemen. The other ones look cool. They just weren't strong. And then we've got gun. Oh shoot, they're archers. <laughs> yeah, there we go. Just regular Gondorian infantry. Let's start it. Speed it up. So now I'm actually curious to see how this goes because those Urukai are pretty good. And I think on a one-to-one -one basis, I almost wonder if an Urukai is better than a, a man, a human soldier. Oh wow, Gondor's getting wrecked now by Arnor. <laughs> Alright, so it looks like if they've got the Citadel Guard, they're gonna do great. Who's the biggest faction right now? It looks like Elf Shields are doing the best. Here's the Dwarves. They're getting surrounded. The Dwarves got whooped by the Herodrim over there, probably due to... Uh, local inferiority. Here's the elves, and they're they're kind of figuring out where they want to go. The elves just whooped up on who is this? Rohan. Oh my gosh. All right, so yeah, right now it looks like the elves. The elves are the superior unit. Although there are a decent amount of Urukai. There's 80 left, and there's a hundred infantry from Arnor left. But I think they're fighting over here. So it's Arnor versus elves. Who wins on a one-to-one -one basis there? At least the elves are split up. Oh, man. I think if... Ooh, this is gonna bleed them both absolutely dry, but it looks like... It looks like the elves barely lost there. So, hold on. We've got 11 men of Arnor left and 45 elven shields left. So, it looks like the elves win. But yeah, guys, give me your Lord of the Rings battle suggestions. And we're gonna try to recreate some of the big battles, right? Maybe Pelennor Fields, Battle of Five Armies. And there's the Elf Victoriousness. What was that? Were those words? 42 left out of basically what? 4,000 men on the field. 42 are left alive. Now, who had the most number of kills? The Urukai had 840 kills. And then in a close second, well, was the elf. Now, the worst unit by kills was the Gondor regular infantry. They did very, very poorly. So, Citadel Guard, elite of elite. Regular infantry, not so good. Anyway, let me know your Lord of the Rings battle suggestions, and I'll see you guys in the next video of Ultimate Epic Battle Simulator, and just the next video in general. Thanks for watching, guys. Bye bye